Hey, in this video, I want to give you five principles for interpreting Scripture. Several years ago at Cornerstone Alliance Church, we went through a course using this book, How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. So if you remember that, if you took the course, then go ahead and get your notes out because that will also be proved to be helpful. And here's a recommendation for you. Uh, buy this book and go through it, How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. But today I'd like to give you five principles for interpreting the scripture. And the first one is context. This is where most of us make the most mistakes when we try to understand what the scripture says. We cannot take a verse or even a paragraph, pluck it out of the context of the scripture and try to understand what it means. We will inevitably make mistakes and probably completely misunderstand what God was trying to tell us. So for example, when Paul, who is in prison, writes a letter to the church in Philippi, and he wants to encourage them by telling them that even if you are literally starving to death, if you are hungry, if you are poor, if you're in prison like me, we have the secret to being content in every situation. Christ will give you the power to do that. So we can't take a verse like that and put it on our football helmet or even you know on the black patches under our eyes and write the verse reference there meaning that God will give us the power to win the championship that's taking a verse completely out of context that's not what it means so for those of you who have been taking or have taken the Bible course then you probably have heard this saying quite a bit you take the text out of the context and you're left with a con and that leaves us sad. So that is the first principle, remember the context. Secondly is the principle of inerrancy. We believe that God's word is without error. And God's word is complete and perfect for giving us everything we need to know about God and to come to salvation. When we talk about the inerrancy of God's words, we are referring to the original manuscripts. We don't have the original manuscripts today, but we have very reliable copies. And many of you have heard the stories and the facts that show that the copies that we have are very reliable. But we don't refer to the translations or the manuscripts that we have today as inerrant, but God's word in the original manuscripts is inerrant. So that brings us to principle number three. Every translation is an interpretation. My favorite translation for the time being is the New International Version. Some of you like the King James Version. I know that Pastor Josh right now has been enjoying the Common English Bible. Others like the English Standard Version or the Revised Standard Version. These are all different versions, but in reality, they are different interpretations of the original text. Many of these versions are produced by biblical scholars who are who know Greek and they know Hebrew, perhaps there's 20, 25, maybe even more, and they all get together on this committee and they take votes and they debate and they argue and then it comes to a vote, how are we going to interpret this verse in this case? And sometimes the vote may be 100% unanimous. At other times the vote might only be 60% 60, 60 unanimous. So at different times people are making interpretive decisions on understanding the scripture. So for example, look at this one from the New International Version, Mark chapter 1, verse 41. It says, Jesus was indignant. He reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. But in a different version, the New Revised Standard Version, the same verse says, moved with pity. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Do you see those two differences there? Jesus was indignant in one case, and in the other case, he was moved with pity. Now, a little bit of research online will show you why the different committees in the different versions decided to make those translation choices. But this is just an example to show you how each version that we have, every translation of the Bible has already been interpreted by the committee that made those decisions. So that's good for us to keep in mind. Now, fortunate for us, because English is a language that we speak, there are so many of these versions. It's really good to read several different versions when you're studying the Bible and not just the one that you're used to. Obviously, the best choice is to read it in Greek, but there's a lot of resources online will help to explain the Greek to us even if we don't understand it. So remember that every translation that we have has already been interpreted by someone else. 
Now the next one is this, principle number four. The Bible wasn't written to us. It was written for us, but the Bible was not written to us, living in the 21st century in Canada at this time in history. The Bible was originally written to people back in Moses' day, for example, back in the first century. Some of the Bible was written to people uh, who were in exile in Babylon. And so it's important for us to remember that it meant something to them originally. And it's our duty to find out what was the message to them in their situation at their time first. Because the Bible can't mean something to us today that it did not mean to them originally. Otherwise, we can make the Bible mean anything that we want. And then the Bible becomes completely meaningless. So it's important for us to get into the, the context that's happening at that time in those days as much as possible. What did it mean to them? And now, how is God speaking um, to us today through that message? And finally, principle number five, let scripture interpret scripture. So what this means is if there are clear parts of scripture where everybody is in agreement on what it means, and then there's other parts of scripture where it is utterly confusing and so many different opinions on what it means, then we will use the clear passages to help us understand the unclear passages. You will notice that there are times when, if you look at commentaries or you look online, that most people agree on what this means. And then there are other times where there's so many different views, it's very confusing. So don't take the confusing passage to try to understand the clear ones. Use the clear ones to help understand the unclear ones. Another example of this is found in Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. There's a lot of imagery in there, and at first it sounds very confusing. What are these lampstands? What are these stars? What does this mean? And we could come up with all sorts of interpretations. But it's best, in cases like this, to allow Scripture to interpret Scripture. So if we had kept on reading, we would have come to verse 20, and we would have known exactly what it means. Verse 20 says, The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And so here's a very clear example where we're allowing Scripture to interpret Scripture. And what this means is, for us, clear passages help us to understand unclear passages. Symbolism, like found in Revelation, are sometimes interpreted for us if we just keep reading or we look at other parts of Scripture. So let Scripture interpret Scripture. Those are, that's the fifth principle and the final principle for now. But I do want to leave you with one more verse. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. Here's Peter, who knew Paul. Here's Peter, who is familiar with the situation that was going on at that time. He knew the immediate context. And yet, even Peter is saying, when Paul writes some things, some things are hard to understand. So this might require some work for us. We have been, we're 2,000 years later, completely different context. So let us understand that some things will be difficult to understand, but much of the Bible will become clearer as we put the work into it. So I hope these five principles help you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me and let me know what your questions are. Mm -hmm.